Easter is the most important holiday for Christians. It's the time when we look at the cross and we realize that Jesus has accomplished everything for his people. He's accomplished salvation. Now, the cross was not just something that Jesus has done for his people. It's actually a command that he gives to his people. This cross behind me was built by some of our high school students, and I had asked them to do some kind of community service before this quarantine. And so they said, we're going to build a cross, and we're going to put it somewhere that people can go to, and they can pray and reflect. They did that because the cross has represented for thousands of years something very important to believers. It represents not only what Jesus has done, but it represents something that we're to do. It's something that we're to reflect on and think on. Jesus says in Mark 8, chapters 30, uh, chapter 8, verses 34 to 35, that um, in order to follow me, you must take up your cross, deny yourself, and follow me. For whoever gains his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will gain it. Now, I've heard this concept of the cross misused more than most passages. People say, this is the cross that I have to carry when they're talking about their financial burdens or about their difficult marriage or about their wayward children. Uh, but this is not the cross that Jesus is talking about. The cross that we have to carry is the one that we have placed our entire life upon, especially the things we most sinfully love. You see, when Mark wrote this, he was writing to these Gentiles who knew about this concept of Roman crucifixion. It was this idea that prisoners would be whipped and flogged, that they would be stripped, and they would be placed upon the cross to slowly die in front of everyone that they ever knew. It was horrifying, and it was shameful. When uh, Jesus walked around and he was sharing these miracles and doing these things, all these crowds began to follow him. But when he said things like this, they were shocked. And many of them left. You see, they thought that he was going to um, take away their sorrows, take away their suffering, that, uh, that he was going to overthrow the Romans and bring um, a godlike king, that he would be their godlike king. But when Jesus said that he would die to the Romans on a cross and that they would have to follow, they couldn't handle that. It wasn't what they wanted. Following Jesus has a great cost, but there's also great gain. If you look at the second verse, it says that gaining uh, our life means losing it, but losing our lives for the sake of Jesus means gaining. That gain is everything. It seems like a paradoxical statement, right? Um, gaining equals losing, but losing equals gaining. But when you take the broader picture of what Jesus is talking about, you realize that it's two different kinds of losing and two different kinds of gaining or two different kinds of salvation. Uh, if you put words to it, it, it might mean this, that earthly self-saving equals eternal loss and sorrow. But earthly self-denial, self-loss equals eternal salvation enjoy. Do you see the difference? Many say that they want to follow Jesus, but when it means that it's going to cost them everything and it will cost them something, it becomes more difficult. But when we have the gain in mind, it becomes so easy. Now, the cost might vary between individuals. It's, it doesn't mean that you will lose all these things, especially depending on the culture or, or the place that you live, uh, but it will mean that you might lose friends, you might lose family, you might lose a job, and you might lose your very life. The call of taking up the cross means losing those things, but it means gaining life, gaining everything, everything. In moments like this, our true priorities are, are kind of tested. Uh, they come to the forefront. And I know a lot of people who are experiencing great loss. But those who are believers in this, they continue to gain because Jesus has offered them everything in salvation. And that everything includes joy that is now. Because instead of 
finding joy in, in the minor things that are here, that are temporary, they're finding their joy in God the Father. Now, um, I, I think that this time when people are at, are at a great loss, this is the invitation for them, that in losing, there is so much to gain in Jesus. It's an invitation for those who are feeling at loss. Now, this passage is worth memorizing as a Christian because every day we have to remind ourselves, our sinful selves, that we need to die to those things, that we need to place those things, those desires, our own wants on the cross. It's something that I have to do every morning. Uh, one of uh, the things I've been doing over quarantine is reading short stories by Flannery O'Connor, and she has this great quote. She says this, Always you renounce a lesser good for a greater. The opposite is what sin is. Picture me with my ground teeth stalking joy fully armed, for it is a highly dangerous quest. What she writes is so true that we trade something better for something lesser because it's what we think is what we need or what we want. But Jesus flips it. He gives us what we've always wanted. It's ironic, right? We, we were trying to save our lives, but in losing it, we gain our very lives, right? If someone promised you 80 years of earthly joy and happiness and traded that for an eternity of sorrow and suffering, right? The person who accepted that is a fool. But the opposite is what Jesus offers us. Even though despite our suffering and our sorrow in this time, our great loss, we have great gain. And the gain is everything. And so I hope that you take this passage, that you memorize it, that if you don't believe, that you take this as an invitation, that at the cross, at self-denial, at picking up this cross, you gain your life. You gain joy and you gain a relationship that is worth trading everything in this world for.